you got to listen. You got to watch this. You got to listen to Alessandro Cesare. This is the one interview you got to listen to. I can tell you already, and it's you're gonna be on fire. Like I don't know anyone who's not on who wouldn't who wouldn't be on fire. And uh, he's the CEO of, of Coinspree, as the creator of, of Pandora Box. He's a you know brilliant, uh, super holistic, comprehending you know uh, entrepreneur, and 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 Bitcoiner, uh, and and you know with all his heart and soul, intelligence and wisdom. So please give it a listen, share this video, like it, retweet, reshare it, whatever you do. Thanks so much for your support and for listening and have fun. Enjoy this one. All right, welcome to the show. Um, I got a very special guest, Alessandro Cesero from Venezuela, CEO of Coinspree and a founder or creator of uh, the, the marvelous um, Pandora box, Full Note. Alexander, thanks so much for your time and welcome to the show. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, you Keith, for, for having me on the show today. Let's pump it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I mean, I, I, I listen to uh, pretty much, I think, every interview you've had uh, lately on Citizen Bitcoin, Steve Oliveira and Max Kaiser with Stacey Herbert. And uh, it was just amazing. You know, it's not only your, your passion that is so contagious, <laughs> But, but also I have the feeling you know exactly what is needed for, you know, the topic of today, hyper-Bitcoinization. So, you know, why don't you just, just kick it off? I'll just shut up and tell a little bit my listeners, my viewers, you know, uh, your background, what is Coinsphere about? You know, you serve obviously institutional uh, clients, but also individual average users. And um, there are some statements, you know, you've made on Max Geise show, which I really want to, I want to take off there where you left off. But then, you know, uh, just uh, kick it off. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, well, yes, look, I've been into Bitcoin for the last nine years, right? Uh, my background of big arts there. I've always been a technophile myself. I said it uh, on those, uh, those past three podcasts that I've been hosted on that you just mentioned, right? Um, I'm in love a bit with Bitcoin and, you know, uh, Bitcoin is a necessity in Venezuela. It's not only a thing, right? Uh, we were so forced to look for alternatives and Bitcoin is totally the best one, right? So coins, I started Coinspree almost three years ago uh, because of my interest that I got so much into Bitcoin. I wanted to start running a Bitcoin business. Uh, I, I first tried launching uh, BitEagle Bit with which was going to be the first Venezuelan led by Venezuelan entrepreneurs, a Bitcoin only exchange, right? Uh, we wanted to try to eat up local Bitcoins. <laughs> and, and I did that with, uh, they were not my friends, but they were some very close individuals that I, that I knew at the time. Uh, I, did not, I did not get into that project at all. But then I, uh, after a year, 17, did double down, well, not double, actually triple down a bit, <laughs> Eva. Uh, and that's when I started Coinstreet. Uh, I didn't know that I was going to create the Pandora Box full node uh, at the beginning. I think that just as with any venture, right? I'm, I'm not trying to bullshit anyone here, any of the listeners. Uh, you, you just continue building and you start learning uh, and also listening to your clientele your potential client, your potential customer, and even people that will not become potential customers. Because uh, I believe that it's Bitcoin is really the hardest money that human has ever created. Everyone will eventually use Bitcoin in a way, be it directly or directly. Uh, so thank you very much for stating again my passion and my enthusiasm, Kiban. Uh, I try to channel it as much as possible when, when I'm when I go live and Oh, I, I missed yeah. the video. Yeah, so, I just turned uh, off the video because, because it's breaking up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I figured that out. Thanks. Uh, look, uh, we will never as individuals or human beings have the chance uh, to, commu to communicate to people something uh, about a, either a product, a service, an idea, and to, to make them feel in love or connected to that immediately. Uh, we will never get that chance. So that's why I always try not to be uh, 
very direct when talking about uh, the values that I that I've used and channeled to all of the 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 team members that I that I've uh, got together inside Coinspree right since inception uh, to create the Pandora Box project and continue today uh, being one of the best Bitcoin ventures not only of Venezuela but of Latin America right South America. Uh, so values are really important, and part of our values are uh, perseverance and customer loyalty. Mm-hmm. And I believe that it is very important, not only for Coinspring, man, every single Bitcoin venture that is out there to talk about Bitcoin and their venture with passion, man. Because there's just so many people that are out there right now on the globe that Maybe they're suffering, uh, they're trying to find an alternative way and they just don't find it. And I think that the best way that you will find over the internet is only Bitcoin. I even quit in college, man, <laughs> at a point. And that was because of Bitcoin, uh, right? Uh, so yes, I mean, I mean, as I said, I'm a very unique advocate of Bitcoin of uh, an ecosystem. And I've been working very hard for the past year and a half uh, educating and telling to the whole banking system inside Venezuela and especially fintechs, okay? Fintechs that are led by entrepreneurs, Venezuelan entrepreneurs that even have uh, companies that are legally based abroad, but they operate with headquarters inside Venezuela and they make use of Bitcoin uh, for remittances. So I've been telling them why it is so important for them to run their own custodial solutions and their own people who know make usage of multi-signature addresses and multi-signature schemes to try to bump up security as much as possible. I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to tell this and I'm going to say it inside of your show, inside of your show, right? Uh, and it's somewhat confidential, but I'm, I'm starting to communicate to the whole community, man, what it is that CoinSpree, what is it that CoinSpree is doing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm working with the regulator inside Venezuela to draft a decree Maybe it will take me two to three years. I don't know how long. Uh, regulators are just stupid people. Uh, I'm working with the regulator to draft a uh, yeah <laughs> draft a regulation that will hopefully uh, pave the way for every single financial institution inside Venezuela that will make use of Bitcoin uh, to create new products or services. Uh, to be not, I don't want to use the word forced, okay, but let's say talked into. They will be talked into uh, the idea of depositing one percent of their assets in, into Bitcoin for the long term, and that's when Pandora Box will come in uh, with a multi with our multi signature schemes that will be built up on top of a Trezor and Ledger, and your Pandora Box Bitcoin full node as a signee for those schemes, and just H O D L Hodo Hodo Bitcoins for the long term. Uh, uh, Venezuela's international reserves right now are standing at six point sixty-seven billion dollars. So if we deposit, if we deposit one percent of that, uh, that would be like sixty-seven million dollars approximately. If we hold those bitcoins for the long term uh, by making use of uh, different financial institutions nationally, uh, and that's when and that's where I want fintechs to also come inside uh, of, of that party, right? Uh, not only banks, banks are antiquated. Uh, fintechs are the future for, for Latin and Africa and Bangladesh, all those countries, uh, because of regulation specifically. So yes, uh, I am this crazy guy, Kivan, that is trying to build a whole banking and finance sector inside of a country in South America. Yes, and as as you know, I don't call it Bit- uh, I don't call it Venezuela anymore. I call it Bitcoin Swell, I do Bitcoin yes. Swell. First country to go, yes, first country in the globe to go hyper Bitcoinization. I said it on Max Geiser, Geiser report. After hyperinflation, what you get is hyper Bitcoinization. Uh, look, Kevin, uh, I'm, I want to ask you maybe your perspective of, of what it is that you think about uh, the idea. Some Bitcoin advocates and Bitcoin maximalists, uh, Bitcoin maximalists believe that hyper Bitcoinization will never come to be true because Bitcoin's blockchain will only be able to transact, you know, seven, ten, or fourteen transactions days that we scale on to. Uh, I think that it is just the core, right? Bitcoin Core was built twelve years ago, and we've 
just been building on top of it. And today it is the nucleus of what I call Bitcoin continent. Uh, I don't see Bitcoin as a currency anymore, just as a currency. I think it is the first digital continent open to any human being, no matter what, which is your race, political ideology, religious ideology, Bitcoin doesn't care. There's nobody in that will prevent you from using Bitcoin and about Bitcoin or censoring Bitcoin uh, uh, for the matter. Uh, so I do think that hotter Bitcoin will come to be true. Maybe not uh, only by making use of Bitcoin Core and the core of Bitcoin itself and the first version of it, its blockchain. I think it will come to be true thanks to uh, layer two, layer three same solutions like the Liquid Network and the Lightning Network, C Lightning LND protocol. I, I think it'll just keep building on top of off itself. What do you think? Definitely. Listen, I mean, I've, you know, I've been talking uh, to to some Bitcoiners whom actually uh, Alex Gladstein of the Human Rights Foundation uh, sometimes quotes in his presentations. It's, his name is Zia. And, you know, he told me the situation in Iran. And that's why I always want uh, also to answer your question. I mean, I think um, that, you know, the cat is out of the bag and, you know, your, your full note is called Pandora box. So the Pandora's box been opened. It just, you know, we need a little bit more than education. We need, you know, more people like you who not only have the passion, but like the laser focused vision, what is needed, required to fulfill the needs, the real needs and desires and wishes and, and necessities. Of, of real people out there. And, um, you know, um, and you, you, I think you, you, uh, some time ago, you said, you know, the first, the first uh, guy who, uh, who develops this, uh, you know, full node that is as small and compact, as thin as a, like a mobile phone, and, you know, which is super user friendly, something like that. Maybe I'm paraphrasing you. But, you know, it needs, we need to break down the barriers, the language barriers, the technical barriers, and, and I also wanted, you know, to have your take, your your your, your perspective, like, uh, like what can people, the people, yeah, I don't care about the regime, you know, in Iran or anything, uh, because you know we are all complaining about all kinds of symptoms, and you know about the you know the criminalities of the nation states, the governments, the central banks, the people need to wake up, and and really start adopting Bitcoin in whatever shape and form, and. Uh, you know, it it needs it it just it just requires uh, to you know to run a full node. I myself, you know, it took me one or two weeks until I had everything up and running and connected to wallet. But you know, do do most people have this luxury of time of infrastructure of technical infrastructure? You know, there's restrictions. There is you know surveillance in Iran uh, restrictions, internet restrictions. I mean. What do you what do you make out of this situation? Like, what can the people in Venezuela learn from Iran, or the Iranians learn from Venezuela, or any other country uh, that is, you know, hyperinflationary, under sanctions, embargoes? Really, at the end of the day, it's the people who are suffering. And you know, I have this very crystal clear vision: the Bitcoin is is just the beginning of a totally new paradigm shift and new civilization. Uh, where we can, you know, really open a lot of Pandora's boxes, you know, on a social level, scientific, technological level, uh, energy and transportation level, everything. All right. So I'm going to shut up now. What, what, what is your like bigger picture? Where are we going? What is needed for hyper Bitcoinization to succeed? So look, uh, after the Venezuelan government started going crazy with the money printing machine inside Venezuela, uh, you 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 started to see right picking up. And we're seeing that happening right now in the US. And not only in the US, it happened a couple of weeks ago with Lebanon when uh, the Lebanese lira depreciated by over, I don't know, 50, 70% in a couple of hours. Uh, that happened in, in 1983 in Venezuela when the first uh, country currency exchange rate regulations were drafted and introduced inside uh, inside the nation and uh, as well as the Lebanese lira the Bolivar got depreciated by over 70 percent in a matter of hours so I do look unfortunately there's just lots of misinformation inside the ecosystem because Bitcoin was built up on top of the internet that's the reality Kivan you know that as as a proud and genius Bitcoin advocate yourself um, 
So people do get, when people start learning about Bitcoin and uh, sort of start going down their own Bitcoin rabbit hole, it's very difficult, difficult for oneself uh, to get the right piece of information that will take you from point A to point Z when talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency specifically. But I do think that uh, political ideologies and the regimes globally, not only in the US, also in China, Japan, um, uh, uh, Britain, uh, Italy, the whole European, uh, uh, the whole, the whole European uh, Union are going down the path of debasing their monetary base, which will bit by bit uh, create a shock on people's pockets and people's wallets, man, okay? Uh, people are not able to save money anymore. People do not have access to credit. And if, they, and if this supposedly global system eyes on capitalism and credit creation and credit spreading for building up wealth, uh, if you don't have access to credit, then you can't you can build wealth. You know, at the rich, uh, they borrow money at zero percent interest rate, uh, but we, uh, middle class and the poor class, the needy ones, uh, we are sort of left behind uh, and left apart, Kivan, because uh, we borrow we borrow money from credit cards at twenty two percent, sometimes thirty six percent interest rates, and that's what. That's what Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert uh, call the, the interest rate apartheid, right? Uh, so the interest rate apartheid is a thing, and it's, uh, it's, it's a shock to the globe, okay? Uh, people are starting to get mad and crazy mad, dude, okay? As I said, riots will only continue to pick up globally. So I, oh, I just think that Bitcoin is this unique... Uh, point of equilibrium between going all mad and finding peace for the globe and the system, uh, Kivan. Because you know that uh, Bitcoin is the most peaceful way that one could make use of to go against uh, all of the, ide the ideologies that have been set up uh, to us. Uh, that is just a bunch of, it is a shit show, as they said on Citizen Bitcoin, man. Okay, uh, uh, what does the Fed use or the BOJ or the ECB or whatever central bank that it is out there right now making use of the, of the money printing machine to communicate what their next policies will be, what their next moves will be? It is only social media. So social media has been working supposedly as this connecting thing uh, for us to share information, share ideas, share news, share Bitcoin, share philosophies, share ideologies, whatever. And the reality is that social media is controlled by centric groups. So uh, Bitcoin, although Bitcoin suffers from central groups globally, and I do believe that Bitcoin is getting institutionalized right now, all of the great Bitcoin volume is coming from whales. And sometimes they only crash Bitcoin's price. Uh, Bitcoin today is only made out of speculators, true Bitcoin advocates, and pre-coiners. Pre-coiners get burned. Real Bitcoin advocates continue educating people to not get burned and continue being a part of the real Bitcoin movement, okay? That is going to save the globe, Kivan. And then you have... Uh, the whales that are just trying to get rid, rid of the weak hands. So, uh, Bitcoin is already part of Wall Street. And for Bitcoin to fulfill its promise, it needs to be part of institutions, uh, humble people inside Africa, humble people in Venezuela, and uh, great people and great Bitcoin advocates globally. I just believe that Bitcoin will find a way then, okay? Uh, nobody knows how, but El Sultan Bitcoin humbly for Paracas connected to Blockstream Satellite to start downloading what is basically the most advanced monetary system and digital economy of the globe right now, Bitcoin's blockchain.
So that's what I think, Kivan. Uh, and look, it's not only about Pinroa, Brooks, and Bitcoin full no. Exchanges are somewhat important to start onboarding people into Bitcoin nation, into Bitcoin content, uh, for them to start buying Bitcoin. I do believe that we need to start creating more decentralized schemes for Bitcoin's usage. And I think that the best usage of uh, peer-to-peer transactional volume for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies overall will come from Latin America. I'm actually inside the office of one of the best Bitcoin and crypto ventures of Latin America. They're building right now, dude. They're coding in front of me what will come to be the best version of local Bitcoins for the globe. And they will come to eat up local Bitcoins. And they are badass entrepreneurs, millennials, just like me, dude. And you will even come to hear from them because they are commercial partners of Coinspree. So, and it's not about Coinspree. It is not about Bernard Bosch. It is about the whole global Bitcoin ecosystem that is building on top of the new world, Ivan. Boom! <laughs> You're so on fire, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're spot on. You're spot on. <laughs> You're spot on. Listen, I mean, Alessandro, you, you talked about like, um, because this is something I've said a couple of times, even on my show, I said, it's going to be one of those countries, either it's going to be Venezuela or in Iran or simultaneously in all those, you know, sanctions, hyperinflation, you know, where it's a really pain, economical, social, whatever pain, suffering going on. And you talked about, you know, with, uh, with Max guys about the global hash rate. And, you know, Iran doesn't only have like oil and gas. They also have like their super advanced nuclear civilian, you know, for energy purposes, uh, energy. So they, they can all use that energy, that massive, excessive energy for, for mining. And the same with Venezuela. I mean, uh, you know, it's just uh, maybe it's just a couple of percentage right now, one, two, three, whatever percent, but it's going to increase dramatically in the very near future. I foresee that. And especially when you, you also said that, you know, the governments are stacking sats and they, they, they sit on a huge, huge pile of, of Bitcoin. So what what kind of parameters, factors have to play in, in order, you know, what kind of things have to play in dynamically? Uh, uh, you know, do you see like a, a chance that we can, you know, you talked about the second, third layer, like maybe even lightning, like, do you see a merchant adoption, like exponentially increasing or something like that, you know, where people really start transacting, trading uh, on, on the lightning network? Okay, so uh, the best use cases for merchant uh, Bitcoin adoption, specifically inside South America, is coming out of crypto ATMs. So Pundiax is behind that, some good crypto ATMs that may use, make usage of DAI token, a Bitcoin, and Zelle payments. So it's, uh, those crypto ATMs are sort of working as a narrow platform for merchants to accept different kind of payments and then uh, send that money to their different accounts that they hold, uh, the different accounts that they have, not only uh, locally wherever they are standing, but also globally. And th- uh, that that's providing financial inclusion for this supposedly globalized system to merchants in South America. So, so, so that's a pretty interesting use case. Uh, I do believe that the Lightning Network will continue to pick up uh, there are just some awesome people backing up awesome projects inside the industry, dude. We see Kraken backing up BTC Pay Server with $150,000 a couple of weeks ago. We see Square Crypto already backing uh, as well uh, BTC Pay Server. You already see the Venezuelan government that, uh, last week introducing, launching this brilliant news that now Venezuelans can uh, pay for their Venezuelan passport using BTC Pair server. So what does that tell you? Even the Venezuelan government is running a, a Bitcoin full node, dude. Okay, and it's attached to the to their own BTC Pay server wallet. That's brilliant. I can disclose that that is not a Pandora box. I do not deal with politically exposed persons. Okay, I do not do that. Other people do that inside countries like Venezuela and Iran. And I and frankly. It's only, co- uh, it's, it's coincidental, okay? Uh, it will continue happening, dude, and picking up, as I said. Uh, I think that uh, above the liquid network, there's an interesting use case that 
uh, could create uh, new platforms for South America, uh, Africa, uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, even Russia, to start transacting assets on top of Bitcoin, right? Because, you know, look, for example, in South America, for the past 300 years, 250 years, the banking system that was born has been, has been controlled by cartels of families. And it's only that way. So uh, South America, Latin Americans do not have exposure to financial markets, uh, investing, uh, building up a portfolio for themselves. So we are ignorant because uh, we are ignorant financially speaking. Uh, and I don't want to be sound like rude, right? But it's just the reality. But why is that, Kivan? Because we have never been provided with the opportunity to form part of that centralized system. Again, inside Venezuela, the, uh, the most reputable banking institutions have over 100 years of history. Dude, not even Apple has 100 years, okay, yet. But you have banks inside South America that have been, that have been running for families. The same families have been running them for the past 100 years. So that's a legacy. Uh, how do you break up those legacies? I think we don't have to break them up immediately or break them up whatsoever. We just have to include them inside the whole Bitcoin way and, and the Bitcoin move. Uh, I am a look, I have uh, talked, uh, talked uh, into this perspective, the banking system inside Venezuela, that we should totally create our own liquid asset and start trading that liquid asset inside the global uh, inter exchange uh, network that uh, blocks you is created with Max and Poloniex, Poloniex and Bull Bitcoin and all of this great. Uh, Bitcoin and crypto that are out that are out there globally. So look, just think about it, dude. It's amazing that an entrepreneur and not me, dude, any entrepreneur that is enough to continue going nonstop, keep on building, can be able to contact firms in Canada, dude, that have been backed by, I don't know, Mars Canada, like Knox Custody. Uh, and bull Bitcoin and Blockstream and Texas, whatever, and just start negotiating uh, to build new commercial partnerships or whatever. The antiquate system that relies on financial markets and the banking system does not does not allow people and entrepreneurs to build new ideas. The VC industry does not even exist, dude. It's only few groups of people that amass some sort of funds and they try to uh, uh, create a new facet for that money, okay? And create a mascara uh, for those funds. They, most VCs are not born to provide uh, intelligent funds and intelligent structures to continue bring, uh, bringing into, into reality and into fruition. These brilliant people that are just passionate and that have these brilliant skills to build teams, uh, motivate people. You, as, as you know, Kivan, today's management is the, it's not only relying on ex extrinsic uh, bonuses, uh, for instance, money. It's, all, it's also about providing intrinsic motivation to motivation. Everything start relying on that, even Bitcoin. So, Again, uh, to be a little bit more straightforward with regards to your question and the Lightning Network. It is important. For example, I do believe that uh, we need to create for countries like uh, and co co the African continent and the South American continent and the Caribbean, uh, this unique firms or, uh, or services that make usage of the Lightning Network. Because here, not many pe people are living hand, hand to mouth, okay? That's the reality. So not mm -hmm. many people have the option to start amassing and saving in Bitcoin. And there's also, there's also a technological gap, right? For people today, as of today, 
to start building their own Bitcoin full nodes and their own custodial solution. It's very difficult for them, uh, but education is where the future of humanity stands. And that is also true for Bitcoin and Bitcoin's adoption. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. And, you know, uh, Alexander, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, you've been playing around. I don't know. Have you already set it up with you, uh, the Blockstream, you know, satellite kit, uh, like local mesh network? Because that would be like, this is where I see the future of totally self-sovereign, totally decentralized, like uh, internet wise and, and uh, whatever or uh, uh, communication information wise, uh, especially for countries, you know, like uh, Venezuela, other countries, even Iran, you know, where 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 you know you just detach yourself from this uh from this um you know uh, uh in, um legacy system or of of technology i mean that that would be that would be awesome if if uh, but again you know it comes back again to the lack of infrastructure lack of education um lack of util you know utilities maybe um where, where do you see this going i totally agree with you on a thousand percent rate, Kivan. Uh, look, I, I even think that Bitcoin is going to be so huge that Bitcoin will also end up eating all of this internet service providers that are out there globally. Uh, AT&T, uh, T-Mobile, or whatever, dude. Whatever you want it to be. Uh, I even believe that uh, eventually, uh, some some ideas will start to be backed up and business models that will include like becoming an internet ser service provider, but not specifically to only provide internet service to homes and offices. But it will be that will be the indirect uh, the indirect uh, use case. It will actually be the intention of providing a Bitcoin full node that will also be a modem and that will work as an internet access point uh, to the global internet, right? The global network. Uh, and I do believe that you were totally right, dude. Uh, mesh network is a thing. Gotenna for Bitcoin is a thing. Locha mesh for Bitcoin is a thing. Yeah, Off Randy Brito, yeah, exactly. It's Randy are, Brito, right? Uh, of Locha mesh and Richard Myers. These are the people who are really working on this. Uh, and even Blockstream, of course, but a lot of mesh with Randy Brito, Richard Myers from Global Net Mesh Network. I mean, if I, I wish there was a little bit more like, uh, do, you, do you see like a really efficient cooperation and, uh, you know, uh, collaboration uh, to, to, you know, to bring this forward? No, I don't. Because look, uh, for example, Blockstream has received over $200 million in funding, but I don't see them providing at least not even twenty thousand dollars dude okay not even twenty thousand dollars to bribe ideas and entrepreneurs inside south america or africa to start building use cases for satellite bitcoin full nodes i did not even receive whatsoever any funding from any firm globally i've only privately self-funded my own venture okay and i am banging the door on silicon valley and in Europe, and I'm under talks, confidential talks, with several VCs globally. So there's not much cooperation to create an efficient global network, and that is just sad, but that is just how the system works, okay? Look, I'm a believer that the industry does not exist anymore. The industry existed when uh, Toyota was being born, when Edison, when uh, Thomas, Thomas Edison created the light bulb, and the electricity distribution industry, that's when the industry started, okay? Uh, and when we got the industrial revolution, not anymore. Who owns the internet? Five, 10 companies? So dude, uh, it's not about uh, Bitcoin or the Bitcoin community uh, specifically, that there is not no efficient cooperation. Although I believe that inside the Bitcoin community, there is better cooperation that inside the VC industry and financial markets overall, you can be totally sure of that. So look, after I started running my old Pandora box satellite setup, I got in touch privately with Blockstream. And sometimes I chat with uh, Samsung Mo, the CSO of Blockstream. Eventually, I, I do think that I'll be able to talk to and chat with Adam Back, the CEO of Blockstream. 
and tell him like, look, man, you just, there are better ways to continue Bitcoinizing and making usage all of those brilliant things that you were building, uh, right? Like, for example, the, the uh, Blockstream Pro satellite kit costs $750 and not many people globally understand why they need to become their own decentralized bank and be connected to the internet. So I said it on the Stefan Vera show, a Bitcoin business today, just as any business, it's not about looking too much into the future, okay? It's not about becoming Elon Musk. There's already an Elon Musk globally. It's about uh, getting back to basics, basics, creating great products tied to excellent brands, register your brand you gotta you gotta own your brand if you do not own at least your brand today you have nothing okay nothing and those brands need to be tied up to brilliant stories and then with vcs and interest funding efficient money okay what the efficient money uh what what the industry calls it with that comes global distribution and important distribution that eventually uh gets standardized, gets more efficient, costs get reduced. And I do believe that over a couple of years at uh, Kivan, uh, running a no will be as easy as peeling a banana, dude. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Look, I mean, there's just, you know, different um, needs and uh, because I'm going to start, you know, with Brit, uh, presentations on, on money, you know, on the, like really practical questions and topics that people, you know, can can relate to over here in Austria, in Europe, you know, like, a, let's say a pretty rich Western, you know, country. So people don't even see anything like anything coming. They think they're, you know, on an island of blessed people, uh, totally isolated from the global macroeconomic geopolitical shitstorm that we're going to encounter now with you know with central they don't even see the problems right now they're so ingrained in their you know in their day-to-day -day lives it's uh you know so i you you know you're really one of the few entrepreneurs which i have the feeling i have the impression that you you have a holistic comprehension of you know of the process of of the procedure of what to do what is what is really needed how to you know how to manifest how to translate this this knowledge the the technique the technology the, the you know so uh, yeah it's 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 crazy it's really crazy but but um do you see like um what do you see like a circumvention of of the dollar uh like with with a uh, in the coming years with where you know more and more countries are just gonna circumvent this international reserve currency, which is just going to crash, the euro is, is probably going to crash too because the banks are insolvent. It's really, it's a, it's, it's, it's crazy what's going on right now. And I think we are really in the in the quiet before the storm, in a huge bubble. That how how long do you think it's the the you know they can inflate this bubble? Uh, what is your perspective here? I think it will take thirty years. Uh, for the usage of the dollar to be seen as crappy, okay, not as a need. Uh, and as you know, some economists uh, mentioned uh, this effect uh, that is the mil milkshake effect. And it's this, it's this idea and perspective that discusses that although the Fed will continue printing money because it's only a vicious cycle and a nonstop cycle, and it's totally backed up by cartels, uh, the bank, the U.S. banking cartel, and the global central banking cartel. Uh, the globe is craving for dollars as of now. So uh, South America craves for dollars. Africa craves for dollars. Even China, at a huge, uh, at a huge percentage, when talking about their economy, craves for dollars. They're actually the biggest holders of U.S. debt. You know that. Uh, I was looking at what uh, the Fed was buying uh, when talking about corporate bonds inside the United States. I was looking at that yesterday. What are they buying? They're buying Berkshire Hathaway bonds. They're buying Apple bonds. They're buying supermarket bonds, for instance, Walmart. They're buying Amazon bonds. Eventually, there's, they will start subsidizing Elon Musk's innovation 
like uh, uh, for instance, SpaceX and Tesla, maybe they will even subsidize Virgin Galactic because uh, if they start subsidizing their economy, which is already a social economy, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's already a communist economy and it's not capitalism anymore because basically the Fed will start owning more than 50% of uh, the American GDP. I do believe that uh, over the next 30 years, usage of dollar will start decreasing and it will not only be because of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin overall, it will also be because of the, you know, the trade war fight between China, Russia, United States, Iran, Venezuela, Argentina, everyone is inside this, okay? It's not only about China and the US. So you know it, uh, the central bank of, the, uh, the, the People's Bank of China, okay? The Central Bank of China has already developed, as they mentioned publicly, a digital version of the Yuan, which is only uh, part of their, of their interest of, uh, de-dollarizing the global economy. Look, if you travel to Milano in Italy, you will see in front of Galleria Duomo, the gallery, okay, uh, a, a huge uh, headquarters for uh, the Bank of China that they just bought, okay, in front of Galleria Duomo. That thing, Ivan, has been shot for the past, I think, like five years. Shot shot indoors okay nobody can go in nobody comes in nobody comes out what do you think that's it they are already prepared for their strategic global move to de-dollarize the global economy and you will start seeing italy first as the first european nation to start making usage of the yuan inside their banking system dude and their financial markets and everything and eventually it'll start picking up inside germany and spain and estonia and switzerland everywhere kivan okay and before uh the united states started building up all of this globe uh, all of this big and uh humongous bitcoin mining farms inside texas being backed by peter thiel and inside the state of New York that we saw and a very old uh, gas plant that they had, they reactivated only to start mining Bitcoin, right? The Chinese are way ahead of everyone at the global mining passion power rate, dude, okay? At that rate, they're, they're just way ahead of everyone. I remember when in 2013, I was showing all of this videos on YouTube of this Bitcoin, of this Bitcoiners inside China building up this huge Bitcoin mining farms. And you talked about Bitcoin to people uh, back at that time, you were just a crazy idiot <laughs> that was losing all of its money by buying this magic digital coin, right? So I do think it's, uh, it, it, it will all be tied up to Bitcoin, decentralized finance, fintechs, creation of new regulation, uh, uh, I don't want to talk too much about Libra coin because I don't know what the hell that type of shit coin is. <laughs> I don't even think that it's a shit coin. It's a crap coin. <laughs> no, it's just, it, it's just a tyrannical coin. centralized coin. It's just, a, it's just stupid. It's just, but it, you know, it could be a gateway. Some people like, uh, who, who is it? Caitlin yeah. Long. Uh, they say, you know, it could be a gateway drug to, to Bitcoin for a lot of people because they, for the first time, you know, people would then notice, oh my God, you know, I can save more, have more purchasing power, whatever that is, you know, some uh, some kind of intuitive thing that they can find out, you know. What do you think about like the, this this acceleration of, uh, because we already have uh, in, in one way or another, uh, negative rates even on deposit accounts in Germany. So, you know, uh, you talked about China now. Now, can that trigger like acceleration of, of uh, you know, banning cash and then going full blown uh, central bank digital currencies all, let's say, you know, pretty much over the world. And that would, you know, that would in turn, in return, you know, uh, uh, ex uh, accelerate the the, the, the the process of hyper Bitcoinization everywhere around the world because the pressure, the pain points, would just increase with that. 
Uh, I, of course. Look, when I went in 2016 to Shenzhen, uh, Kiban, uh, I bought a couple of bananas on the street from, an, from, an, from a 15-year-old Chinese kid, okay? Teenager. Uh, that he planted at his home, and then he started selling them uh, with a wagon, okay, bandwagon, on the street on China. And I paid using digital yuans via WeChat, okay? So the biggest chatting app inside China already five uh, and six years ago was making use of the digital version of the yuan. You already have Alipay to pay at most merchants in Shenzhen and Guangzhou and Huizhou and Shanghai, okay, Shanghai inside China and you, wh what do you use? You, do, you use a digital version of the Yuan that is backed by the Central Bank of China. So are they going to ban cash? Yes. Are they going to be the first one of, uh, going uh, full digital with regards to money usage and money transmitting services? Of course, man. Uh, they are just so, they're just so clever, dude. That's what I have to say. That's it. Cause you know it, if you don't use a VPN inside China, you cannot use Facebook. You cannot use Google. You only have to, you can only use Baidu and Tencent and all of those Chinese big tech giants that they now have, right? So I think that Shenzhen is going to be, to be even bigger than Silicon Valley, man, okay? And that's the thing that the US government is trying to stop and that's why specifically the money printing machine of the US and the American markets is subsidizing Wall Street and specifically big tech companies. Because overall, it's not about uh, the hashing power race or the Libra race or the stable coin race, it's about out a technology race. Uh, from a technological standpoint, the US is already winning, but because they have the most advanced uh, space rockets on the globe. And we don't know what will come out of that, but possibly if Elon Musk, go, if Elon Musk goes to Mars and he finds a new mineral, which will bring stupid usage and energy production inside a planet Earth, then maybe the U.S. goes way ahead of the Chinese people and the Russians. And, and you know, uh, that's a whole other perspective because we're talking about energy specifically. But yes, I do think that cash is going to be banned. Look, I live inside Venezuela. I have a Venezuelan Bolivar bill inside my wallet. And, and it's like, what am I going to do with this? I can't even pay for <laughs> I can't even pay for the parking lot to, with this. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> now, <laughs> Alessandro, um, how many people are in Venezuela? I mean, I assume these are more, let's say, affluent, you know, richer people are 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 hoarding or hodling Bitcoin, you know, as a store of value, as a as an asset. As a, a lot, as a, a lot, man. Okay, so the financial sector uh, like the Venezuelan stock market and the, the banking and finance sector is mostly based on uh, a part of Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, right? Venezuela's capital uh, that is called Las Mercedes. Inside Las Mercedes, there are uh, buildings that have been bought making use of Bitcoin. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, via Bitcoin payments. And, and we're talking about $50 million, $60 million so we're, you're actually starting to see even real estate commercial, uh, uh, commerce, real estate commerce and real estate trade uh, uh, backed by Bitcoin, dude. Uh, there are lots of scams inside Venezuela with regards to cryptocurrency. There's a huge scam where lots of people lost, lost money. Uh, Audi coin and Audi coin would be the biggest one. And after Audi coin, uh, there's... Bitconnect, baby! <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you seriously say Audi, Audi, like Audi, the car, like Audi coin, or what kind of coin is that? Like, oh, it's a shit U R I A U R I coin. It's a shit coin that a group of uh, idiotic Venezuelans created 
with some people from Liechtenstein. Uh, it's only a, it's a mess, dude. I even met uh, one of those what they what they call Oracoin ambassadors. <laughs> and that is so talking. sad. Yeah. And he I started yeah. yeah, he started telling me like, yeah, yes, I'm gonna build, uh, I'm gonna create you a an Oracoin an Oracoin wallet. Give me your email, and I gave him like an email that I use for scams and studying uh, crypto scams. Okay, it's an email that I don't I don't use for any other thing, right? <laughs> and he 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 gave me a million dollars in or an Oracoin. So so I'm a millionaire, but. Uh, when talking about Oracoin. <laughs> this is so hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't know there's still so much shit coinery going on. Okay. I thought that was like 2017, yeah. you know, the, the, all this uh, phase is over. But obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. You know, people are just being scammed out. I, I just feel sad about this. But, you know, what can you do? Hey, dude, we, we just got to give the credits to the lean the Leonardo da Vinci of shitcoins, Vitalik Buterin. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the master of all bitcoins. Exactly. Yeah, who is all like yeah. good friends with uh, with Putin. Yeah, <laughs> he he's the most renowned artist of shitcoinery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's highly intelligent, but he just pretends to be so stupid. I don't know. I I don't know either whether he just believes that shit. He's just. You know, propagating or what was that? Where Adam Beck always criticizes him, you know, about uh, a, couple, a few years ago about some kind of quantum bullshit. Remember that that thing? But you know, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Look, dude. In the end, you know, Kivan, uh, pitch cells do exist. Uh, I'm a proud member of the Crypto Valley ecosystem. I mean, Coins Free, right? Inside the uh, inside Switzerland in the canton of Zog where we are actually legally based. Coinspree is legally based in Venezuela and in Switzerland. Okay, I can disclose that. Uh, uh, and as a member of the Crypto Valley, I got invited in September to the Private Investor Crypto Circle event in Geneva. We were about 25 people there. Uh, the main key officers of the Crypto Valley were there. And I told all of them, quit being shitcoiners. You've built an inflated... Uh, what an inflated that a thing that you are calling industry that is valued at over 22 billion dollars only in Switzerland. And you talked about the Crypto Valley Association and whatever and that you are experts at stable coins. Look, I do believe that it, it is really interesting being someone uh, um, uh, not partial, not partial. Okay, let's try to be a little more balanced. Uh, they have one of the best regulations to issue ICOs on the globe, right? Uh, it is only a filter in the system. If you run the numbers for building up an OTC inside Switzerland uh, to create that structure and achieve break even, you need to have like $3 million uh, volume per year. Only to, to reach break even, the, the break even point of that type of business model, okay? So I told all of those key officers, quit being shake coiners, quit selling to the globe that you are cryptocurrency experts and stable coin experts or, or whatever, and that you are creating these special use cases built on top of ERC-20 tokens and Ethereum, because eventually you will get burned. Look, dude, uh, the friend that is building the, the new and most uh, and most hectic version of local Bitcoins, okay, that is in front of me right now. He met Vitalik Buterin himself in Zug, and he got inside his apartment, and he saw in 2017 when Ethereum did not even have an office, okay? Ethereum was a foundation that was uh, being based on an apartment that Vitalik owned inside the continent of Zug. And it was Vitalik and two other shit corners. So it's only a shit show, dude. The industry, it is inflated, okay? It is inflated. And it is filled with speculators. And we need to get rid of those speculators. We need to talk passionately about Bitcoin. And yes, negatively about shit cornery. Because shit cornery is killing innovation. Innovation through cryptocurrency will be fostered via Bitcoin, 
nothing else. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Alessandro, what is, what is your... <laughs> that's amazing. Alexander, what is your vision? I mean, you know, the problem I see is that a lot of people don't even see the potential of what comes through and with Bitcoin. And, you know, once we have whatever an, a totally rooted monitor root layer, you know, with Bitcoin, what kind of future? Can you explain to people what, 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 is, what is the change? What is the transformation we're going to see for ourselves, not only for our, for our children, and, you know, since I'm becoming a father in January 2021, a proud father uh, for the first time, I mean, I want to see my child or our child, you know, grow up in a, in a free, you know, civilization uh, and, and in a prosperous, in a technological, scientific, evolutionary society. Uh, what, what kind of, what, what is your vision for the future? Okay, so since I started my venture, I'm going to talk as an entrepreneur here, right? Um, uh, there's just, I've just met this people that don't even understand what I'm building, but they're trying to sell me uh, a drafted version for Coinspree's business model to be competent with the standards of the industry and the banking system and the accounting system. And they just want to charge you up like $15,000, okay? Uh, two years ago, uh, one year ago, uh, excuse me, Kivan. Uh, I was negotiating with one of the best legal firms from Venezuela who has international exposure, right? To gain exposure to European VCs uh, that invest in fintech companies. They were charging me $15,000, and we're talking about $15,000 inside Venezuela, okay? We're not talking about $15,000 being charged in Switzerland or whatever, which would be kind of a normal thing, okay? Inside Venezuela, you're, you're, totally like grabbing all of the savings of an entrepreneur if you charge him $15,000. Probably not every single entrepreneur, you can be sure of that. Probably maybe only 1% inside South America, for example, will have $15,000 in savings or even a little bit more to start running your own venture and start paying people, build up a group, do some interesting marketing, start communicating, start educating, start making an image for yourself. So look, uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will start getting rid of all of this. And perhaps even before Bitcoin and cryptos uh, uh, being adopted as a global standard, okay, for accounting systems and the banking system and financial standards and credit emissions, okay, and wealth and wealth, uh, wealth creation use cases, probably it will come from fintechs and decentralized finance applications that efficiently try to help entrepreneurs and what we call uh, pymes in Spanish, right? Uh, the small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, to not be charged $15,000 by a buffet of attorneys, an antiquated buffet, okay, that only understands the legacy system and does not have a very, I don't know, structured vision of what technology will actually achieve and over the next five and 10 and 20 years, okay? Uh, but yes, entrepreneurs won't have to pay an accountant. Entrepreneurs won't have to pay obscene fees to attorneys. And that will be all, uh, entrepreneurs won't have to uh, fill up 27 and 37 pages of forms only to have a bank account, dude, okay? Look, I'm one of the best, and I say this humbly, okay? Humbly and passionately, because I'm proud. And I want to talk highly about Venezuela. Venezuela does not only construct bad news. It also constructs one of the greatest entrepreneurs of the globe, because we have been forced to, okay? We are outliers of the system. And that is happening in South America, that is happening in the US, that is happening in Africa, that is happening in Asia, and that is happening globally. And it's because of government and banking oppression, okay? It is coming from there. So uh, technology will continue democratizing, right? Workspaces and information, the global air flow of information. So that will start uh, creating more awareness. And you know, Kivan, psychologists already say this. Uh, the human... The, the humankind has never been so conscious in human history. 
our level of consciousness can be so elevated today that only by being able to have internet, okay, internet, and study over the internet, download books for free, okay, uh, download uh, movies over torrents and not pay Netflix and documentaries, whatever. I do that. I don't pay Netflix. I download everything over torrents, okay? Make you use VPN and I run my own Bitcoin for most over Tor. And yes, I am a millennial. And yes, I do hate that, that term because it's only a stereotype. But uh, the generational gap is already starting to hurt baby boomers, Kivan. And there's there's only one infinite condition in life, dude. Adapting and evolving, adapting to change. You either adapt or you become a dinosaur and you get hit by the meteor. <laughs> uh, I'm writing everything down you're saying, by the way. Yeah? <laughs> so, <laughs> making notes, man. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Awesome. I'm honored. No, I'm really, really enjoying this talk, man. Uh, listen, I don't want to take too much time of yours, but do you have like any final thoughts or like a, a something on the horizon you see uh, for whatever, you know, for all these people out there listening, uh, young or old, uh, wherever they are, what, what, what's your, like from your heart and your soul, what is it that you want to share? Okay. Uh, never stop. Just as Phil Knight, Knight said on his shoe dog book, uh, when he talked and he introduced to the world brilliantly, okay, uh, an artistic book. Humanity to transcend to a new level. Whatever it is that you want to build today, do that. Believe in yourself, please. Educate yourself. Nobody will do that for you. Nobody will take care of you for you. And you have this immediate need of taking care of your family. If you are a millennial, if you're a centennial, you have to continue embracing the new world and it is not tied up to licenses and government regulations and some paragraphs inside a constitution no all of those things lost their values because they are being backed by awful people today do podcasts listen to podcasts like this brilliant one uh listen to people like Chamath Polyhepatia, I look a lot up to the, the dude. I think it's not inside his vision or his plans, but I believe that he should become, at least for four years, right? Only one term, uh, one of the presidents of the United States to rebuild the image, the important image that America has built for the global economy for the past years. Because communism does exist, socialism does exist, Government oppression does exist. And, you know, historically it changes, but uh, you need to be always a, an image uh, that people will look up to. And that is very difficult because that is tied to responsibility and being constant. But if you have to be one thing today, Kivan and listeners, it's constant and honest. People are tired of being sold bullshit. People don't want to even buy anything nowadays. People are broke, but if you're broke, maybe you can be financially broke, but mentally broke, never, folks. Never allow anyone to break you up. You are impenetrable. As impenetrable as Bitcoin's blockchain, only if you allow yourself to evolve in a way that you will come out out of the ashes as the new phoenix that the globe needs. I am trying to work as an advocate and a voice of passion, Kivan, for whatever listeners and whatever people I connect with, okay? Thank you very much, Kivan. Follow me on Twitter, people, El Sultan Bitcoin. Follow me on Instagram as well, El Sultan Bitcoin. 
Follow Coinspree on LinkedIn, coinspree.com. Check out our webpage, coinspree.com. Check out this awesome podcast. Listen to it once again. Share it. Share it with your loved ones. Share it with your folks. Thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity. To all of the outliers, entrepreneurs, and Bitcoiners that are out there, I will continue repeating this. Do not stop. We are building the new world and the new system that the globe needs for the future of humanity. Peace, guys. Thank you, man. I love you, dude. I love you too, Alessandro. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> Hope we can repeat this, really. There are some people I would really love to have a panel discussion with you, such as Has, Fr Has uh, Fryer. You know, he also, you know, like preaches about like stacking sets or, or other people that, you know, in this community. They're just so, you know, but you are like, you are like a natural drug, you know, for the Bitcoin community, man. <laughs> we need more people, entrepreneurs like you, who think and, you know, who act. Who I met really are so passionate. I met for Bitcoin. I am ecstasy for Bitcoin, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, Alexandro Cesare, thank you so much again, and uh, hope to you know talk to maybe even see you in person someday in the future uh, in Austria, in Europe, or wherever. Maybe I'll come to Venezuela sometime and <laughs> and you know have have a direct talk with an, with one another. Thank you so much for your time. You will be. Inside Bitcoin Suela next year with me, with Max Geister, with Stefan Libera, with uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, with Brady from Citizen Bitcoin, with John Vallis, everyone, because El Sultan Bitcoin is planning the sickest Bitcoin techno party on the globe, man. And it's going to be called the Bitcoin Tropical Valley event. And it's going to be hosted inside Bitcoin Suela. Peace, folks. Thank you for the opportunity, Kivan. See you next time, man. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks so much, Alessandro. Bye-bye. Take care. Whew. On fire. I think everybody should listen to this. It's it's just, you know, whatever whatever mood you have, uh, Alessandro Cesare always brings you, like, uh, really ignites your fire and, and, and you know, uh, wakes up this, this passion and this uh, your heart and your soul and your... It, it, everything just comes to the light. Wisdom and... You know, true hope, true conviction, and 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 trust. You know, trust in yourself, and uh, we gotta really just share it in whatever shape and form. Share this video, share this interview with Alexander Cesare. Uh, stack sets. Be careful out there. Uh, uh, take care of your security, your privacy, and you know, we got a really bright future ahead of us. So. Thanks so much again for your support. Please follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is Kevin Davani or LinkedIn, Facebook, Telegram. It's all in the show notes. Make sure you follow Alexander Cesare, El Sultan Bitcoin, as he calls himself on, on Twitter. Uh, and yeah, I'll talk to you soon. And let me know which other guests I should have on uh, uh, next time. All right. Thanks so much. Total Bitcoin Podcast. My name is Kevin Davani, Total Connector. Signs off. Bye.